Good, happy Friday morning, February 28, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Friday morning, so let's begin. First up, health officials in New Hampshire on alert, preparing for coronavirus potential. Prevention, isolation, and medical supplies are priority. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. less than 100 dairy farms left in New Hampshire. Tell your grocer today to carry milk with New Hampshire's own logo. You can't get any more local than buying it from the farmer. Please help save our farms. In response to this virus, the hospital will be placing these signs at all of the entrances to the hospital to make sure patients who feel sick are taking the proper steps. Last month, Littleton Regional Hospital treated a patient with a potential case of the coronavirus. He had like a bad cold, so there was really no medical care. It was about isolation and proper interaction with the patient, not to spread it. The 19-year-old was an international student at White Mountain School in Bethlehem and was in the affected area of China over his winter break, but he did not actually have the virus. The hospital is now using lessons learned in his case to prepare for any future patients who may have the illness. Right now, we're actually, as we speak, drawing up uh, signs, signage at the front doors, all the doors where patients would access on what to do if you have symptoms. Like putting on a mask and telling a staff person if you've traveled internationally. And we also have protocols on how to interview a patient to see if they qualify for becoming a patient uh, uh, that could be under investigation for this. The purchasing team is also stocking up on protective gear. Concerns are that we might not be able to get the personal protective equipment that we need. Understanding that this is really simple equipment. This is gloves, you know, paper gowns, this is a mask, that kind of thing, because the world is using them up pretty quickly right now. State health officials are also preparing in a number of ways to back up hospitals, health departments, and first responders. It's getting a lot of attention, um, so I believe that we'll be prepared as much as we can be. Staff here at the hospital recommend that all people practice good hand hygiene for the next couple of months to prevent all types of illnesses. Reporting in Littleton, Kristen Carosa, WMUR News 9. So the chief medical officer at Littleton Regional Hospital just said that he had some concerns about getting medical supplies, but some other first responders say right now they have plenty of surgical masks to respond to emergencies. Chris Stawaz of American Medical Response in Manchester says they have hundreds of these masks masks on hand. He says these are called N95 surgical masks, which means they removed 95% of contaminants from the air. Stawaz says they just ordered masks two weeks ago and they have an adequate supply. We have uh, an ample supply of the masks. We always try to keep a, a certain number of them in reserve. It's um, very common for us to do pandemic planning. Uh, we do it several times a year with our public health partners and hospital partners so you know we prepare and plan ahead for uh, occasions like this so all first responders get fitted for the masks every year and they are required to wear them on certain calls okay and there you go on that video and that report london dairy man accused of assaulting woman leading police on chase. Londonderry police say man was charged in a separate incident last month. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cronin. We have less than 100 dairy farms left in New Hampshire. 
Tell your grocer today to carry milk with New Hampshire's own logo. You can't get any more local than buying it from the farmer. Please help save our farms. 32-year-old Donald Fraze is facing charges in two states tonight after police say he committed several crimes ending with a dangerous ride. It started last night at this Manchester Walmart. Definitely facing some serious charges here because this was serious what happened in the Walmart parking lot. Fraze allegedly held a woman he knows against her will and physically assaulted her in her car. She was able to get away. Then police say Fraze stole her car and took off. This woman was a victim. Definitely a scary situation for her and for him to then take it further. There's probably some other charges coming out of Massachusetts as well in regards to what happened once he did leave New Hampshire. Fraze was spotted in Salem. He's then accused of leading officers on a high-speed chase that ended in Woburn, Massachusetts, where a tire deflation device stopped him. They were finally able to get him off of the interstate before anything worse could have happened because he was going at a very high rate of speed at that point with the police officers following him. Just last month, Londonderry police arrested Fraze. This mugshot taken as he was being treated for injuries he suffered when police say he tried to stop a woman from leaving her driveway and punched her vehicle. He was charged with domestic violence, false imprisonment, and criminal mischief. It's not clear if that woman is the same person connected to the Manchester assault. Praise is currently in Massachusetts right now when he's sent to Manchester, possibly next week. He'll be charged with criminal restraint and robbery. Reporting live in Manchester, Mike Cronin, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Dartmouth College ends Italy program early aimed at coronavirus concerns. Two programmers in France continue. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. At Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Dartmouth College now ending its study abroad program in Italy early as an outbreak of coronavirus there. The college says while it feels the risk to the 13 students is low, it's concerned there could be a disruption if the number of classes goes up. Students are being told to book flights back as soon as possible. Two other Dartmouth programs in France will continue, but 14 students are not going to class and are self-monitoring for any symptoms. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Nashua Soup Kitchen transforming former school into shelter space. Soup Kitchen leases building for one per year for Diocese of Manchester. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Cherise LeClaire. When you move homes, you move more than just yourself. That's why Xfinity has an easy-to-use online experience to get your TV and Internet up and running in a matter of minutes. Awesome. Simple, easy, awesome. Click, call, or visit a store today to get started. Rooms that haven't been used as classroom space in some four decades will soon house individuals and families looking for emergency housing in Nashua. Nashua Soup Kitchen and Shelter leases the 20,000 square foot building built in 1893 for $1 a year from the Diocese of Manchester. Beginning this summer, construction will turn the old classrooms into living space, including 91 beds, separate space for men, women, and families, and even those with longer term housing needs. But it's not 
not just about the housing. NSKS says there will also be learning spaces for people to get certified in different fields, play areas for children, and a community garden outside. This is incredible. This is going to change the way we provide emergency shelter for single adults and families with children in Nashua and the greater Nashua area. We're going to more than double the number of families we can serve in emergency shelter. Now they're projecting an opening date of July 2021. They're about 75% of the way there with funding. If you'd like to learn more about fundraising, you can head to this story on our website. In Nashua, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man sentenced to seven years for sexually assaulting teen he met through social media. Prosecutors said teen picked up in Manchester. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. At Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Go Brian so has pleaded guilty to five charges, including felonious sexual assault. Prosecutors say last year he drove from his home in Exeter to Manchester, where he sexually assaulted a teenage boy in his minivan. Just hearing the facts, this is probably a parent's worst nightmare, is finding out your child got into a van with a stranger. Um, and obviously what happened, what ensued after that, um, it's incredibly damaging for anyone, let alone a 13-year-old teenage boy. Prosecutors say O'Brien met the teen through social media. During sentencing, the state read a letter from that boy's father. I pray that my child, our child, will learn many valuable lessons from this horrific crime and be better for them, not defeated by them. O'Brien told the court he takes responsibility for his actions. I just want to apologize to the victim and his family. I was highly manic at the time. I'm very sorry for what I did. O'Brien was sentenced to a minimum of seven years in prison. The adults in the community are supposed to protect the children in our community, and that is not what you did here. Um, to the contrary, you took a vulnerable child and um, abused him. Part of O'Brien's sentence is that he must register as a sex offender for life. Reporting live from Andy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Dow set to drop 400 points after Thursday's massive tumble in coronavirus fears. U.S. stock features pointed to more losses early Friday after the major indexes suffered a tumble that sent them more than 10% below their record highs. How coronavirus may impact your travel plans. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. And returning now to our top story, the spread of coronavirus. Many countries fearful of an outbreak have been closing borders for some or even all travelers. Airlines have also been restricting travel to many locations. And with disease experts predicting a larger spread for COVID-19, air travel is going to be impacted in a major way. So you might be asking how this might affect your travel plans. Joining us now to help answer some of those questions, travel expert Mark Stewart is here. Mark, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate that. it. Um, the first question, I guess, is a simple one. Do we stay or do we go? So many people are asking that question. Yes. In fact, a friend of mine was just messaging me on my way here. He and his wife are supposed to go to Italy. My number one piece of advice, go to the CDC website. It offers specific advice for specific countries, including cruise ships, which we know have been in the news. In the case of Italy, the CDC says take precautions, such as washing your hands and avoiding close contact with people. Bottom line, though, is this. If you do not feel comfortable, you do have some options. Just today, United Airlines 
extended travel waivers to people traveling across Italy, including Milan and Venice, which, as you know, are some hard-hit cities. So if you're still in the planning phase, what are some precautions you can take to protect the money you're investing into this travel in the event it doesn't pan out. Right, a lot of people have been talking about travel insurance and unfortunately it is not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. In fact, in most cases it won't provide you any protection in the case of the coronavirus. It's been known since January, so companies are very hesitant to offer that kind of protection. Where you may find some assistance is that if you are stuck or stranded somewhere, perhaps you could get some discounts on hotels or meals, things like that, but right now, even the airline credit cards don't offer that kind of protection that many people would assume you would get. So even with a credit card, there's not a whole lot you can do in advance? Not very much. In fact, it's really up to you. If you are going away and you are concerned, perhaps take some steps ahead of time. Talk to your physician here. Ask if there are medical clinics abroad. It's very difficult to be sick and to be away. It's not so simple as it may seem. Another suggestion, if you live near a university, contact their travel clinic. A lot of universities offer specific guidance about vaccines and other pr uh, protections you can get before you even step on the plane. That's a great tip. And then lastly, what happens if you are away and you either get sick or you get stuck? What are your options there? Well, I think you should first and foremost keep some lines of communication with people here at home. Mm -hmm. It may be easier for them to perhaps reach the airline or reach the physician. I was overseas once, had a medical issue, called someone in the States, they were able to help find a physician while I was abroad. You really do have to be proactive if you are going away at this time because a lot of the resources that you think would be there may not be when so many people are needing help. It's such great advice and you're right, so many people are asking these questions. Mark Stewart, travel expert, we appreciate it, thank sure. you. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast. Right here on the Riley King Network, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.